We know there are many choices in Internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hi, this is Kim. And I'm James. Inviting you to join us on our all new reality. Re- Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on Kick Your Assets Into Shape radio show here on LA Talk Live. Today, oh my goodness, we have an incredible show planned for you. So I'm so excited about today's show. But before we go into today's show, um, there's a few um, things that I want to take care of. Um, I just want to remind everybody that every Friday at 10 a.m. you tune into our show. And if you missed our show, make sure you go to LATalkLive.com because the shows are archived. Well, we have an amazing show planned for you today. We're going to be talking about empowering women. This is our week that we dedicate to simply focusing on what it means to be an empowered woman. And speaking of that, we have an amazing guest who I'm so happy to have in the studio today, Desiree. Debro of An Empowered Woman. Welcome, Desiree. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. And Desiree is joining me as my guest host. As you guys know, my husband is not here today. He said for the end for the empowering women segment, he thought it'd be wonderful for us women to sit around and have a conversation about what it means to empower women. And I know that that is your expertise. So I thank you for coming on today and for being my guest host. Um, I want to get a couple of things out of the way for people who are just tuning in, maybe for the first time. I want to tell you a little bit about our show. This show is very unique in that we talk to people about how to get your money straight and your business growing. We have two segments. We have the financial talk hour, which we call money talk, where we have an opportunity to talk to you about things like how do you get out of debt? How do you improve your credit? What investment should you be thinking about as of today? How to save your money and make those dollars go further. So for those of you who are looking for some financial help, tune into our show because you'll get it here every week. The second hour we call the buzz on business. That's where we're bringing you the top experts in business to help you be able to learn what things you should be doing in order to strategically grow your business. We have the greatest experts here who, if you tried to hire them on your own, you would find that it would cost hundreds of dollars an hour just to sit down and have a conversation with them. But we bring them to you firsthand so that you get the information that you need in order to grow your business. We talk about things like branding and raising capital and bookkeeping and accounting. You know, those important topics that you need to know in order to grow your business. We talk about marketing. So we make sure that you get what you need as a business owner here on this show. Wow, we have so many wonderful, wonderful things going on. And first, I want to say thank you to our supporters and our sponsors out there. We have C. TJ Maintenance, who is a major sponsor of ours. They are a a maintenance company out of Dallas. We thank you, CT. Uh, J Maintenance for supporting us. We also have Certified Paintmaster, who is my father-in-law, who is a major sponsor and contributor for our show. And then finally, we have my company, Kelly Ralph Financial Services. So thank you so much to our sponsors. Thank you for all the help and the support that you're giving us. Um, You know, I always like to tell people a little bit about me because You know, a lot of times, you know, I come into a room or I come into an event. I tell people I speak somewhere every week in addition to doing the radio show. So but I always like to tell people a little bit about me, a little little bit about my background so that, you know, you know, what qualifies me to do what I do. (laughs) And I love having this conversation. You know, for years I used to teach workshops and seminars and I wouldn't tell people my background. And someone asked me once, they said, well, what's your background? 
Well, I've been in financial services for about 14 years and I absolutely love it. It's something I'm passionate about. But for the last five years, I've been doing workshops and seminars that in, in, inspire and empower people to take action in their business and to take action in their finances. And as you all know, I am the speaker and coach that kicks your assets into shape. And on this show, I focus on kicking your greatest asset into shape, which is you. So, you know, if anybody ever has a question for me or you need to reach me, please visit my website at www.krfs.org. Again, that website is www.krf is in Frank, S is in Sam.org. And if you'd like to reach the show, I hear I, we are getting so, uh, so many responses, so many uh Re responses on Facebook. A lot of people are reaching out to us telling us you love the show and I thank you for that. Keep on sending the, that uh, positive energy and all that, those great comments. But if you want to uh, let us know your thoughts or you have a question or something you want us to address here on the show, go to Facebook and like us at Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Again, go to Facebook and like us at Kick Your Assets Into Shape or you can simply call our office with any questions you have at 888 888- 828-3332. Again, that number is 888-828-3332. <clears throat> I also want to let you know what's coming up. Um, we have so many things going on. And one of the questions I get asked all the time by business owners is, Kim, how do I build my customer base? I'm struggling in this economy. And I tell them it, the, the economy is not the problem. It's the actions that you're not taking that's the issue. So on August 9th, I am launching a seminar. It's a business income accelerator seminar where I'm going to teach business owners how to grow your customer base. Where do you find the customers? I know a lot of you are, are challenged or concerned about that. But you know what? It's really not as hard as you think. You just need to know the strategies that you need in order to make that happen. And I'm going to tell you, I have a lot of background and experience with that. With being in financial services so long, I understand what it takes in order to build a customer base. In fact, when I launched my own boot camp um, a couple of years ago, within two weeks, I had 10 clients signed up for my my uh, boot camp program and most people are like Kim how'd you do it and I said you know what I've been trained and I understand the the importance of relationships I'm going to teach you that in our seminar on August 9th in Glendale so make sure you join us and if you want more information about that you can visit my website at krfs.org so please make sure that you check that out and you make sure that um, you look at the other things that we have coming up Last night, ladies, we had an amazing meeting for women who are looking to raise capital. You guys know I have this incredible meetup group called Empowering Women in Business. Well, last night, these women, we came together and we had an incredible time. We talked about how we were going to support each other in business. And we also talked about what we needed to do in order to raise capital. I am actually training this group working with them to raise capital for their businesses. And not only am I working with them, but I'm bringing in experts from um, websites like Kickstarter to help women raise capital for their business. Because we are already know that the SBA is not giving out money the way they used to for businesses. So we've got to be creative, ladies. We've got to get out there and take some actions so that we really get what we need for our business. So if you are a woman business owner and you need to raise some capital, come on and join us. We had an amazing time. We only meet once a month, but we've got some great strategies in place that where we're going to support you and help you raise capital for your business. Well, I think I've got all my housekeeping stuff mm-hmm. out of the way. <laughs> and yes, that was a mouthful. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting because I'm so used to doing this with my husband, James, who's my host, my other host on the show. And it's so much easier when it's two of us. So Desiree, you know, I'm so glad to have you here today. Thank you. Thank <laughs> welcome, you. welcome, welcome. It all sounds so interesting and exciting. Thank That's you. Great. We're Good doing work. some incredible things here today. But you have an awesome women's organization called An Empowered Woman. And I know that we are going to have such a good time on the show today talking about how to empower women. Tell people a little bit about an empowered woman and then also let them know how they can reach you. 
Great. Well, An Empowered Woman is a global membership-based networking community and resource center. It's for women professionals and entrepreneurs. So we support women that are starting, fixing, and building their businesses. And we do it through our web radio shows, TV shows, mastermind meetings, seminars, telecalls and classes, and awesome live events. Wow, you guys got all <laughs> kinds of things to help women out. Lots I love things. it. Well, we refer to ourselves as multimedia okay. you know, because you have to reach people in many different ways. And because we're global, we need to be able to expand our message as far as we can. But we do different things um, through education, motivation, yes. and community. I love and it. And so it's a place, a resource center where women that want to, you know, no matter where they are, mm -hmm. can get more education. You know, get like you were referring to, get, the education is key. Oh, yes. Many of us have our craft, have our talent, you know, and we can bring that to the table. But most of us don't have, how do you get merchant accounts? How do you raise capital? How Absolutely. do you um, do your branding, your marketing, whatever? We have our gifts, but that may not be on that list. So, but it's definitely part of it that makes the business work. Absolutely. And, you know, those things are so important because I don't care what type of education or degree you have. They typically don't teach you those things That's in business school. So you you've know. got to, you know, link up with organizations like yours mm -hmm. to be able to get that empowerment so that you get the resources and the know-how to do certain things in your business. So I think that's phenomenal what you're doing. Exactly. Because a lot of people don't realize that, again, they've got this great idea, they've got this great talent. It has nothing to do with that. It's just that they don't know how to move it forward. So consequently, they get into a frustrating situation and their business doesn't work and then they uh, fail. And they yes. think if they take it personally where it has nothing to do with them, it has to do with what other parts of their business. It's not just one part of the business. It has so many different segments, you know, and being able to handle the HR, to be able to handle oh, yes. the employees. I mean, all of those things are really big and really important. And either you have someone handling it or you have the knowledge to handle it yourself. That's right. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, I have a business degree, but my business degree didn't teach me anything about running a small business. It taught me corporate business, but nothing about running a small, small business. So for me, it was linking up with the right kind of people and the right organizations such as yours that gave me that help and that know-how and that understanding of what things that I should be doing in my business. So what you're doing, you know, so many people are in, in need of that. How do people reach you? They can contact us by 818 eight six five eight five six three or they can go to our website um an empowered woman dot com that's a n e m p o w e r e d w o m a n dot com or email us at info at an empowered woman dot com. Oh wonderful. And can you repeat that one more time just so that people can hear it? Sure. It's an empowered woman dot com. That's A N E M P O W E R E D W-O-M-A-N.com. Now, Desiree, do you have any events or um, any, <laughs> <laughs> any special things coming up that you can tell our listeners about? We have lots of events. We had 12 events this month. Would you believe that? 12 live events. The next one is um, on Tuesday. We have a meet and greet at Joe Malone's. It's a beautiful perfumery okay. in the South Coast Plaza. Those are smaller events where we can get to know more about the ladies, ladies to more, know more about us, and they're hosted by a great company. But our big event that we have is on August August the 1st. Yes. And that's our launch of the Orange County chapter. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting. It is. We just kind of, we have members all over. We had a lot of members in that area and they said, come on down. So we're actually going to do it. Oh, wonderful. Well, you know what? Um, we're going to go ahead and take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to go ahead and get into this discussion about empowering women in business. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us on L.A. Talk Live. We are kicking your assets into shape. I am your host, Kimberly Kelly Rolfe, joined by my special guest, Desiree Dubrow of An Empowered Woman.
ladies and gentlemen, introducing Miss Margot Hudson and the hottest new love and relationship radio show. Destination Love Life, where love and wellness come together as one. Every Monday at 10 a.m. Join us as we give the latest in love advice, tips, interviews, news, call-ins, games, and giveaways exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream. Use your Android phone, iPhone, iPad, whatever you have. Prepaid, BlackBerry, let's do it. Destination Love Life, every Monday, 10 a.m. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. And we we are, are more than, than just talk. talk. Help, love, healing, laughter. The Margo Hudson Way, every Monday, 10 a.m. Ooh, right in your ear hole. Ooh, Rob, I like your brain. I've never heard nobody say they want to suck on my intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> we'll see you there, everybody. Hi, this is Olden Polonese, retired NBA player, inviting you to join me for my show, The O Zone, Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I am going to be talking about basketball, baseball, hockey, football, you name the sport, we're going to talk about it and dig deep. The O Zone is where the truth lives, so don't forget to tune into The O Zone with Olden Polonese, exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream.tv. That's the O Zone with Olden Polonies every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Hey everybody, this is Richard Carr inviting you to join me in the radio boardroom for the new Entrepreneur's Weekly Summit in my all new day and time. That's right, the new Entrepreneur's Weekly Summit is moving to Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific. So don't forget, the new Entrepreneur's Weekly Summit, now Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific, exclusively here on LA Talk Live, where it's more than just talk. We'll see you there. Hey, this is your girl, Paris, straight from the Cousins, and you can join us every Monday at 8 p.m. Here live, bring you some great entertainment for those ears, exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream.tv, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hey, are you spending your time or are you wasting your time? Well, kill some time hanging out with Michael Kaya, Brooks Jackson, and the whole crew at the Michael Kaya Morning Show. I get up late. That's every Tuesday, 3 until 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you don't know what that is, you better get on the Internet and look it up. And while you're there, go to LATalkLive.com and check me out. And we are back, kicking your assets into shape on LA Talk Live. Today, our show, we on our show, we are empowering women. Yay, what a wonderful <laughs> topic. And I am joined by my guest host, Desiree Debro of An Empowered Woman. Desiree, <laughs> thank you so much for being You're here. You're welcome. Thank you. I've been so excited about doing this show with you because I know just from attending your events, you have so many wonderful topics and so many different ways that you help women business owners. And today on our show, we get a chance to do just that. We get a chance to give um, our listeners some nuggets, some things that will be helpful to them. You know, the women of today um, are looking for so many things, and I think women's the empowerment is defined probably probably very different uh, today than it, what it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um, share with us, Desiree, what women's empowerment means today. You know, you're right about the fact that it has changed because women have changed. Absolutely. Women's roles in the world have changed. And because of that, we're taking on a lot more and we need a lot more to restore, you know, to 
more resources. And so one of the things is that many women transition from the home. They, yes. that, was, that was a great area of being oh, empowered yes. because that is the biggest job, the biggest or you know, biggest organization you're going to run and uh, to do it well between mm-hmm. your family, your homes, and yourself. And then now that we take on the business world, and that's duplicated I mean, for, again, your businesses, the facilities, the staff, your customers, all of that. So it's a lot. And it's not necessarily so much, but it's just new to us. And many of Absolutely. us didn't have a skill set. We may have certain skills as far as our uh, areas of expertise, whether yes. it's accounting or law or you know, medicine or baking cakes, mm-hmm. whatever it is you have that. But it's all the other things that come into play with that that we have to juggle. So when, I know you mentioned earlier about you know empowering your your work and your people and your family and yourself. Oh, it yes. has to start with yourself first. Oh my goodness, you're so right that about that. That is the engine That's that will right. allow you to go out and then do anything else mm-hmm. at any other level. Absolutely. So start with yourself and you know, it's important that and that's usually the last person yes. that's taken care of. That's usually the last person You're so right about that. on the line. I mean, mm-hmm. if you don't have, you don't feel, we all know what having a bad hair day feels yes. like or not feeling that our makeup or our clothing or anything is right. We know that. That has to be taken care of because if it's good, if they say if you take care of your mother's, mother's good, the kids are good. Absolutely. You have, if you're good, then everything else will be good. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, it, you know, it has to be that important. So that whether it's five minutes or ten minutes or whatever it is, Absolutely. you have to take that time. Someone would say, well, I have to steal a few minutes. Well, if you call it stealing, that's it. But you have to take care of you first. Oh, yes. And, you know, Desiree, you know, I, just like you, have the pleasure of speaking to women entrepreneurs on a regular basis. And some of the things that I hear women talk about, out that are really important to them in terms of, you know, what it would take for them to really, you know, have the, the kind of life or the quality of life or to feel empowered in their lives is they need to feel empowered in areas such as their families. You know, they need to know how do I balance this career with my family? They need to be able to understand, you know, how do I manage these finances? You know, I'm the person I'm trying to do everything. I'm trying to run a household. I'm trying to run a business. These finances are all out of whack, you know, so they're looking for help a lot of times in those areas. And the other times, you know, the other issue is relationships. You know, you know, it's it's no secret that as a woman climbs, her relationships tend to get worse. So, you know, those are a lot of times the things that women are, are um, concerned about. But I so agree with you. It definitely starts with self. And so, I, you know, I would definitely like to be able to share with today's woman some of the things that um, we can actually offer to her in terms of some good nuggets or some good strategies or tips to help um, with that empowerment process. You know, how do we help to empower them in the area of finances? You know, how do we help them to show them to have that balance um, with their family and with their children? And I don't know about, you know, you, but I know when I first went back to um, work in terms of my business, I, you know, I, I went from being a stay home mom to now running a business and I felt so guilty every time I walked out of that door. So, you know, those are the kind of things that I really like to address on our show today. But before we get started, we have a couple of guests that I would like to introduce everyone to because we're going to have an incredible discussion here today empowering women. And I want our guests to really be involved in this conversation. So today we are joined by Marion Lopez of Parenting on Your Own. And we're also in, in joined by Michelle Shannon of M. Shannon Consulting. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get started, I always like for my guests to know who are, um, I always like for my audience to know who are my guests. So can you tell us a little bit, start, starting with you, Marion, about who you are and tell us a little bit about parenting on your own. Sure. Okay. So who am I? Uh, well, I raised two children from the ages of three and seven as a single mom. Okay. And um, so I had a one parent family. And your kids had epilepsy yes they did they Mm. both had childhood epilepsy Uh, thank goodness they're both good by the age of nine my daughter was off of her medication by the age of six my son was off of his so they are both doing wonderfully now Uh, so I had to figure out how how do I get everything done you know it was a whole new thing I was Mm -hmm. on my own now and I needed to learn how to create that community and how to make it out there as a single mom. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, you had to work, you had to figure out everything, and you almost kind of felt like you had to take your own dreams and put them on the back porch. Does oh, that yes. sound familiar? Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and so for me, I kept thinking, what, what and how do I do this? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I had my own bumps, and I realized that 
with a one parent family and a two parent family, you know, there's definitely some differences. Yes. But I think the biggest thing is we both ride the same roller coaster of life, right? Oh, yes. You know, we still have the same the same issues as a two parent family. The only difference is there's only one of us, right? Oh, yes. And guess what? There's only one of us to make sure that everybody is strapped in tight for that ride. <laughs> and you know what? But I, I and I have to say, even as you know, even I've been married a long time. My husband was a firefighter, and sometimes he'd be gone on fires for like a couple of weeks. Yes. And I, one of the things that I understood that at the end of the day, it was still on me. That's yeah. right. You know, so even though you know being married, yes, I had that support, but that at times I felt like a single parent. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what my program what I have is an online membership community for um, one parent families oh, wow. and the interesting thing is you just hit the nail on the head there's a lot of women out there or men where the spouse is gone yes. and maybe they're gone for more than a week more than a day maybe they're in the military yes. and they go employment guess what they are now a one parent family Absolutely. as well so what we have are resources for our members oh online. I love it wonderful thank Definitely. you so much and maybe you can share some of those membership or, or some of those resources, resources as we go along yes absolutely okay thank wonderful. you and Michelle my name is Michelle Shannon I'm the owner of M Shannon Consulting and I have quite a few things that I do that I primarily teach etiquette classes to children oh I, I love teach it teach them how to behave in social situations um, right now, I'm starting my magazine called Los Angeles Black Parent Magazine. It's a magazine designed to bridge the gap in our community, the information gap, I should say. Oh, wow. Because I feel like our children are not really being introduced to, you know, um, many things or they're not Is getting a chance to be involved in different things that are that are community has to offer. Okay. We don't really take advantage of everything as parents. There's lots of things going on all the time. And if I go to the different events, I really don't see too many people there okay. at all. And I think the kids need that nowadays, you okay. know, to help them grow. You know, they may have an essay to do in class and the teacher may tell them to write on somewhere that they've gone. And a lot of the kids can't really write on it because they really haven't gone anywhere. Wow. You know, so I list a lot of free things or things that are, you know, really doesn't cost that much at all to for people to take their kids to that are in the community. I love it. And that's so important because a lot of times on the weekends, I know in my family, we're thinking, what do we do now? <laughs> and as an entrepreneur, a lot of times, I'm be honest, I'm working on Saturday. So mm -hmm. we try and set aside one day a week, you know, which is Sunday. But by Sunday, sometimes we're so tired, we're worn <laughs> out. But, you know, we're pushing ourselves to go do something. And by then, we're trying to figure out what do we do. So I think that's a wonderful resource. And you have etiquette classes. I'll definitely yes. have to tell our listeners, do you have one coming up soon? I actually do. I have a luau for children. Wow. And the luau is based on social etiquette. It's actually a theme class. My classes are, my workshops are mostly themed workshops. Okay. And it's a social etiquette class. It's to teach kids how to properly meet people, introduce people when they attend a party, how they should behave as far as in when they arrive, speaking to the parents and the person who who's hosting the party and arriving on time. Um, I just go over certain different, you know, points of etiquette to let them know exactly how to participate in a social event or if they attend a party, birthday gifts, how you act if you already have it, still act surprised and be glad that you got the <laughs> gift and, you know, and so on. I love it because, you know, today's kids will say something like, I didn't want that. <laughs> exactly. And so I teach them how to just still say, oh. I wish I did not I had this or, you know, to just be right excited about have, the gift, yes, right? Yes. Just <laughs> That's right. Say something exciting. Excited and yes, thankful. Exactly. Well, you know what? I tell you what, um, let's go ahead and get started with our conversation. Um, but before we do, we're going to go ahead and take a little short break. Um, thank you all for listening on Kick Your Assets Into Shape on LATalkLive.com. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Roth. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Happy 
for Elena's Beauty Talk and more exclusively on LA Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, R&B, or watch us on Ustream.tv, Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Lynn Kaufman inviting you to join me every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Time for our all-new show, Losing It Live. We'll share all the latest weight loss strategies, food news, tips for the holidays, travel, and we'll even talk about emotional eating. If you've ever tried losing weight and are still struggling, check us out. And if you haven't yet begun the journey to better health, tune in and let us help you. So, don't forget to listen and watch us on Losing It Live, Wednesdays at 2 p.m., exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also find us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hello world, how you living? This is Dee Brax, your host of the all-new rap project here on LA Talk Live. That's latalklive.com. Or you can find me on iTunes Radio in the R&B section. That's the rap project every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's Wednesdays at 7 p.m. West Coast Time. So don't be late. On the rap project, I will be playing the very best of rap and hip hop that goes beyond the ordinary. So connect with me, your host, D Brax, the rap connoisseur, on the rap project every Wednesday at 7, right here on LATalkLive.com, where we are more than just talk. Welcome back, everyone. We are Kick Your Assets Into Shape on LA Talk Live. We are having a great conversation here on our show today, which is about empowering women. We have some amazing guests here today who will be sharing with you on the area, the subject area of empowering women. They'll be talking about things like what they're doing in their business and what tips um, that they can actually um, give you that'll be helpful to help you uh, manage, you know, every day from your career to your family to your business. Um, Before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody If you are someone who is challenged with developing your customer base, you're trying to figure out where the customers are, don't forget to join me on August 9th in Glendale from 9.30 to 1.30. Uh, PM, I will be talking to you about what it takes in order to really build up that client base. So if you need more information about that event, go to my website at krfs.org. Again, that website is krf as in Frank, s as in sam.org. I am joined today by my guest host, Desiree Dubraw, as well as Marion Lopez of Parenting Your On Your Own and Michelle Shannon of M. Shannon Consulting. Desiree, 
you know, we need your help here today because, <laughs> you know, I, I, I know that um, with running an organization like An Empowered Woman, you're so used to empowering women. So 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 just engage me for a moment on this. Um, I want to talk to you about, I know, a challenge that a lot of women face today and definitely one that I dealt with when I started my business seven years ago. I am a new business owner or maybe I've been in business for some time and I'm juggling being entrepreneurship. Everybody knows as an entrepreneur, we, we work how many, what, 14 hours a day minimum. <laughs> so I'm juggling um, entre- running this business and trying to help, you know, make it grow. And then I've got this family at home. I'm feeling guilty because I'm walking out of the door and leaving my kids and my, you know, my baby is saying, mommy, please don't go. <laughs> and then I'm trying to navigate relationships and at the same time, Time, keep my own self healthy and keep my own peace of mind. What things can you tell our women business owners, our women listeners out there about just juggling and balancing? What things do they need to know? And Mary and Ann, Shannon, please feel free to, to jump in at any time. I think one of the things is to realize that it, you are juggling and balancing. It is an act, and it will always be an act as long as you're growing and you're learning and expanding yourself. It comes with the territory. Oh, yes. But to be able to prioritize is oh, the most important thing. That's key. And you are the number one. And so whether it's early in the morning or late at night, take that five minutes or that ten minutes, and that will grow into more time as things get under control, but for yourself. For me, sometimes it's just staying in bed. I'll wake up and I'll stay in bed and look out the window and just daydream oh, for that's five nice. or ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Look at it, or you can. Some people read, or some people listen to some music, or they do exercises. Whatever, is, take that time for yourself. Maybe it's just in front of the mirror, taking the time to do your makeup. Take the time for yourself first. Then you can give to your family, and, and then you can give to the world. That is so and, true. And then, then prioritize from there. Mm-hmm. You know there's lots of things to be done, and not, you can't do everything. Even if you know yes. how to do everything, you shouldn't do everything. Mm-hmm. So really feel the areas that you can do and you can handle and be able to know what you need to delegate. But that usually brings along the next question. It's like, well, how do I afford that? I can't afford the accountant or, mm-hmm. or um, you know, bookkeeper or... You know, different people that you need to have on your team. Right. First, if you identify your team mm-hmm. and you know what that is, then you can start researching and try to find them. Sometimes people will do barter with you. Sometimes oh, yes. people will trade with you. I'm a master at so. bartering and trading. <laughs> <laughs> we have this negotiation. It's negotiation oh, yes. and negotiate. You have to negotiate way your way through your business. So, and then also being able to get them in small bites. Maybe you can't afford. Oh, uh, a yes. bookkeeper every week, but maybe one hour a month, absolutely, you know, can help you and just get you started until you can able to expand from there. That's but right. Realize that you can't do it alone. You don't need to do it alone, mm-hmm. and you don't want to do it alone. So build up your support team, and 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 not only your exactly. your support team, but your your business team, so yes. that even though you're in business um, for yourself, you're not in business by yourself. You're getting exactly. the support, the help, and the resources that you need to really be able to execute your business the way you need to. Yes, and I hear you when you talk about your children and your family walking out the door. Oh, yes. Um, That's a hard one always. That's hard for every woman, Mm -hmm. but I incorporated them a lot of my business. I was doing real estate at that time. Okay. And they were certain things that they knew when I co- was able to close a transaction, mm-hmm. close an escrow, they would get a little percentage of it. Whether it's, <laughs> That's and great. And it's a price point. It was mm-hmm. one price they got $10, another price they got $50 and whatever. So they were part of the they weren't you know, part of the problem. They were part of the solution. They enabled me to be able to go out and work, and they were answers. They wanted to kick me out of the house, like go close that escrow. That's right. Because it was a beneficial, and not only the monetary beneficial, but we would go on a trip. You know, when we close the escrow, I could have mm-hmm. two or three times. Now we're going to go on a, two or three days extra to go on a trip. So it was time that I spent with them, and they looked forward to that time. You know, I, actually, I, I love that. Um, I remember taking a trip, and my daughter was small, and I had to go away for about a week. And she cried for me every day. And every night I'm on the phone with her. She's like, Mommy, when are you coming home? And I'm feeling so terrible. I'm feeling guilty. Even though I knew she was at home with my husband, she was well taken care of. Marion, talk to us about, you know, just some of the challenges and just overcoming that. And, you know, what do you do, especially right. if you're a single if single mom out there balancing entrepreneurship? I know that, you know, you were a, had a thriving insurance business for many years and yes. that pulled you away from home. You know, right. how do you you balance that what do you what do you tell women you know I think the important thing is to understand that you're creating something for your kids it's for all of you and so 
you know, trying not to take that, oh, mommy, mommy, don't leave. You know, you got to figure out different things. My kids and I, um, they used to write me little notes and they put it on my bed. Oh, that's great. And I would write them little notes and put it in their lunch. You know, so it was different things that you would do to really help them understand I'm coming home because I think that's always a thing. Don't leave me out. When they were younger, I used to actually take them to the office with me, and I'm sure they remember this still. And so on Saturday and Sundays, they would come with me, and we would unlock all the doors, <laughs> and they would have fun, and they would go up and down the hallway. And then this way, we were always together. So I think, you know, Desiree, you're right. You incorporate them into what you're doing. In the insurance business, when I had packets to put together, I would ask, okay, who wants to help me with the packets? Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, it was fun. After a while, they were like, oh, no, go ahead. You could do the packets. I don't want to do them. <laughs> but it really is about incorporating them. And for ourselves, as long as we can remember that what we're doing is for everybody, it makes it a little bit easier and a little bit for them to understand, too. I always let them know what was going on. Uh, to a certain extent, of course. Oh, yes. And I had my mom and I had my sister. And so we had a lot of people around also. Oh, um, yeah. So those support systems are just, yeah. oh, they're, they're critical. You have to Married or in. single, you're, oh. they're so critical. You know, you pull in your community, you pull in everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I had my in-laws that were close by and they would help out also. So I, I really built that family around what I had. So even as a single parent, I don't know if you'd feel the same way, but, you know, you bring in who you need to help you, right? Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. You, w whatever you can, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you bring in. And, you know, something else that I hear um, women say all the time is, you know, they feel like, you know, we're just work, work, work. You know, <laughs> it just doesn't seem like, you know, enough play time or enough fun time. But, you know, when we're building our businesses, we are really hitting the grind. We're really, you know, putting in a lot of time. Right. Shannon, share your experience with building your business and just, you know, how you're going about in, in, in your day to day. Um, what things um, would you um, share with business owners that they should be thinking about in terms of, you know, maybe it's a new entrepreneur starting out. What things do you think they should be focusing on? Things that I think that they should be focusing on are trying to get as much information as possible that they can. Maybe they can find a mentor or someone to come up under so that they won't go through a lot of the mistakes oh, a lot so of business great. owners do go that's through right. when they, for their first starting out. Oh, yes. I, you know, I think that that is awesome. Desiree, I mean, I, I know your organization is, is probably filled with women mentors. Yes, because that, it's a shortcut, as she said, uh, that why go through the trials and tribulations yourself? Why reinvent the wheel when somebody has already done it? We're looking for the shortest, fastest, easiest and most empowering way to get from point A to point B. That's right. Now, you know, you guys know that I work in finance and it's, you know, it's something I really enjoy. But one of the things that I hear women say all the time is, I'm struggling with these finances. You know, I'm really good at what I do. You know, my background is in marketing or my background is in product development. But, you know, these finances, the finances are so overwhelming. Um, can each of you just share a little bit about maybe your experience and maybe some of the, the things that you found to be be beneficial or helpful in dealing with your finances um, and you can share anything from your business finances to your personal finances I think finances is a big part of your business and is part of your life and you need to manage it you need oh, yes. to be able to you need to face it because mm -hmm. many times when it gets overwhelming we just want to shut down and, and push it you know in the drawer oh yeah but if you have some programs like there's a lot of easy programs and it doesn't sound easy but they really are easy mm -hmm. bookkeeping programs or budget programs where you just simply put in the numbers I found that once I started doing that it was actually more empowering than disempowering oh yeah because I could really see where I was spending money where I needed to spend money where I didn't want to spend money and I was able to adjust it and I could see where I needed to pump up my business I could really see what areas was working many times we do projects because we're passionate about mm -hmm, it that's right and then I I saw, well, wow, that didn't make me any money. I don't need to do that anymore. Or I can do that as a secondary project. My primary project, um, which actually bring, you know, brought the income in, was important. So we have the cash flow. Uh, there's cash flow strategists and mm -hmm. cash flow programs. You can set up once and wow. easily just kind of fill in the numbers. And even my son was doing that mm -hmm. as a young person. And then they could see what we were doing. You can manage it a lot better. There are different tools out there. 
and ways to manage it and then get a bookkeeper to help you out. Oh, yes. You know, and one of the things that I always say is you really should know what your bottom line number is. You know, understand what it takes in order for your, your business to break even. You know, sometimes people don't know that you're out there, you're selling products, you're sell, selling services, mm -hmm. but you don't know whether or not you're profitable. And, you know, the, the first step or the beginning, one of the steps, the, the key steps in whether knowing whether or not you're profitable is to understand where your break even point is. So, you know, I, I think that that's something that, you know, I, I always talk to women business owners about because I want you to understand, you know, how your bottom line is impacted and really to know, you know, how many products or services you have to sell in order to break even and then how many products or services you have to sell in order to um, make a profit. Yeah, a lot of people think cash flow is making money, and mm -hmm. it's not, because it's just flowing through your hands. That's right. <laughs> so they need someone to look at them and put them on the budget. That's and right. Schedule. <laughs> yeah, I know, you know, I think um, what's important when, uh, back in the day, as I, my son would say, <laughs> is that I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to put my budget together. Oh, how do I like most create? Most people don't. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I think that's a very common mistake that we all make. Yes. And um, Desiree, I think you're right. We do tend to turn a blind eye, you know, and, and ignore what's out there. And so, and, and with single parents as well as, you know, one parent family, a two parent family, all, again, the same thing. We hit the same financial issues. And if your child is sad and not feeling happy, what do you want to do? Well, let's go buy him something, right? <laughs> you know? I'll buy you something and you're going to be really, really happy. Yeah, for about 10 minutes. That's right. <laughs> and then they're not happy anymore. And then you realize, I just spent all that money. So, you know, for me, I learned the hard way and had to figure out how to do this. And so um, I really challenge everyone out there, get a handle on your finances and you know your home finances as well as your business finances you need oh, yes. to know where you are if you have no idea what the numbers are mm -hmm. how can you get anywhere absolutely so know your numbers know where you are that is so very important that's right I agree I think that um, that's a topic that everyone pretty much needs help with a lot of entrepreneurs have a problem with that when it comes to finances because a lot of times they have problems with their pricing, mm -hmm. with their pricing their services. Oh, That's yes. like a number one problem with a lot of entrepreneurs. So I personally think that a lot of people just, you know, do what works for them as far as in what they make, you know, the profit and everything. I think that's what goes on with a lot of entrepreneurs. But I find that I use um, some online tools that help me out. They really help me out a lot. And I try to keep track of everything with my receipt book also. I love it. You know, I, I love that you said online too, because you know, it's so funny in this day and age, you know, people like to use the internet for everything, but for what they need. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now you can Google just about anything. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there are so many things that you can go to online to actually get help with your finances. Um, Mint.com has a great program that allow you to um, track all of your um your your accounts and then link your bills as you need to pay them and it'll actually you know email you when different transactions come up and I love that the banks now will email you you know if you have a check that just came in or if you um, you have a transaction that looks unusual you know there's so many systems and tools that you can set up to really get help and then the other thing that I always tell people is you know, especially if you're an entrepreneur, when you're first maybe setting up um, your business, it's a good idea to sit down with an accountant or bookkeeper to let them give you some guidance. So put aside some money in your budget to get that guidance and, you know, ask them to show you how to do some of the basic things. And then maybe once a quarter, meet with them again so that you make sure you're on track and you're doing the right thing. So, and I think that makes a huge difference because if you don't understand your bottom line, if you don't understand, you know, what it takes in order to turn a profit, if you're not keeping good financial records, that can really get you in trouble. And I love Desiree, when you talked about cash flow, oh my goodness, that cash flow can really get you in trouble in a business, you know, for, for, you know, maybe you 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 just don't have um, uh, maybe you have cash coming in your business, but it's not coming in at the right time. Right, and it's going out as fast as it's coming in. Exactly, or you know, or sometimes you know, a, a bigger issue that I see with um, entrepreneurs is maybe you have a contract and somebody's not paying you on time, and you want to take on maybe a new contract or you want to get a new job, but you haven't been paid on the last job, so you don't have the cash flow in order to take on this new job or maybe to develop, you know, or, or or, or uh, deliver some new goods because you don't have the the, pay, the cash flow from the other you know job. So that cash flow is just really huge and really understanding it. You know, 
There's a lot of uh, different organizations, too, in the community, like the SBA and the Small Business Development Centers, the Women uh, uh, business centers that will actually provide that actually provide uh, resources to business owners and they also offer classes you know I, I just encourage you know if, if you're a woman woman business owner and you're out there you know doing what you do so well take some time to get some education and training on your finances you don't have to master it you just have to be able to understand it and now I mean you can get a virtual assistant who can actually manage it for you so yes you know their finances is so important for women entrepreneurs because of the fact that we put so much into our business mm -hmm. okay many times we put all of our money we put ourselves mm -hmm. spiritually mentally socially you know all those air emotionally we drain everything into our oh, business yes, that's and right if you can't say that you're being rewarded mm -hmm. you know and you have a cushion and you have something that you know that payback for it not that we're always doing it for money but you need the money to continue doing it absolutely so it really is one of the first things that we have to do and master and cash flow happens to everybody no matter you're a multi-million dollar company we have a lot of evidence of mm -hmm. that in the last few years oh yes or whether you're just a small mom and pop so don't think that it's just you don't take it personally oh yes that's just I, one of the I, first steps that's right and I, I think the finances are linked to security. So, you know, this is a good conversation. Let's continue it. When we come back, we're going to take a little break. Thank you for joining us on Kick Your Assets Into Shape here on LA Talk Live. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Rolfe, joined by my guest host, Desiree DeBrawl of An Empowered Woman. As around the sun, the earth knows she's revolving. And the rosebuds know the bloom in early May. Just as hate knows love's the cure. Rest your mind is sure that I'll be loving you always. Now I can't reveal the mystery of tomorrow, but in passing we'll grow older every day. Just as all that's born is new, do you know what I say is true that I'll be loving you always. Until the rainbow lands the star in the sky. It's Miss R&B, and I'm inviting you to come and hang with me every Thursday night at 9 p.m. PST for Perspectives Corner with Rona Roe Bennett on America Talk Live. Hear and see interviews and live performances from some of our favorite celebrities and personalities in entertainment, sports, business, and the wellness industries. We're getting lifted and we're going deep, talking about life and empowering the champion in us all. See you there. Hi, this is Kim. And I'm James. Inviting you to join us on our all-new reality radio show, Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Every Friday at 10 a.m. beginning June 29th. Join us on the show that gets your money straight and your business growing. So don't forget to tune into our show, Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes.com. And like us on Facebook at Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Or watch us on Ustream TV. This is LA Talk Live, reality radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure and more than just talk. We are your hosts, Kim and James of the all-new reality radio show, Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Which boot you gonna use, babe? The steel toe or the pointy one? <laughs> no boots on this show. Oh man, dang. <laughs> Hi, this is Don Christie inviting you to join me every Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific, for my all new show, The Don Christie Show. Join me 
as I discuss love, spiritual readings, your purpose, why am I born, what am I here to do. So don't forget to tune in the Dawn Christie Show at 1 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on LA Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV, Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. What's going on? It's your man, Melo D, inviting you to join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. for my new show, Dane's World. Join us for new hip-hop, rap, as well as upcoming artists. So don't forget to tune in to Dane's World exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, R&B, or watch us on Ustream.tv. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, where we are more than just talk. As around the sun, the earth no seeds revolving, and the rosebuds know the bloom in early May. Just as hate knows love's the cure. We are back, kicking your assets into shape and empowering women today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Roth. We've been having a great discussion about just balancing as a female entrepreneur. And we're coming to the top of our first hour. And I just want to say thank you to my guests who've been here, and, and especially my, um, my guest host today, who is going to go into the next hour with me. But before we close out this hour, I wanted to just... Um, give Michelle Shannon an opportunity to just share a couple of things with us about how you can help our listeners and how they can reach you and stay in touch with you. Okay, I can help our listeners with my etiquette business um, because I teach children how to behave in social situations. A lot of parents think their kids don't need etiquette training, but you may have a quiet child that you may think, oh, my child has manners just because your child is quiet Mm -hmm. or polite. It doesn't mean your child has proper manners. Your child may not even know that a salad fork even exists. Wow. You know, they may be well-behaved to you, well-mannered, but they may not know that a salad fork exists. They may not know how to RSVP for a friend's party or, you know, there's certain things that they still don't know. So that's what I teach. And with my magazine, I am, like I said, bridging the information gap because I feel like there's a lot in our community that we don't take advantage of. And I'll give you an ex- a real quick example. I was on one of my daughter's field trips, and there was a child that was coughing. And I can tell as a parent that it was an asthmatic cough. Okay. But the parent did not send any medication and probably didn't even tell the school that the child has asthma, maybe didn't even know. With my magazine, I have articles in the magazine that tells different things about asthma, diabetes. I talk about different things like asthma, diabetes, um, and so on. You know, trying to inform the parents as well of different medical conditions or whatever that we have going on in the community. Oh, wonderful. Um, I also go into a lot of the people that I think. We have a lot of interesting people in Los Angeles that we don't even know about. So I also do interviews on the people at the same time, too, so that we can find out more about what's going on, you know, in and our Shannon, city. Shannon, how do our listeners get in touch with you? They can get in touch with me through my Facebook page, LA Parent, Ma- L- I'm sorry, LA Black Parent Magazine okay. online, and they can also get in touch with me by going to my website at mshannonconsulting.com. I was able to find you this morning on Facebook, so I know she's a really, really? easy find. Yeah. Yes, you can just <laughs> Google me and everything will come Wonderful. Well, you know, Shannon, I thank you so much for being on the show today. You definitely, you know, what, you, what you're doing, I think is amazing. Thank you. And I'll be sending my daughter to your etiquette class. So okay. <laughs> thank okay, you I so look much. Forward to seeing her. We've been having a wonderful conversation about empowering women, and I want to continue that that uh, conversation. We're going to be bringing on another guest. Um, her name is Chauncey, and she has a one a, a motorsports business. And I'm so excited to bring her on. We're going to take a little break and. Uh, Mary, are you going to hang around for a little while? Absolutely. Wonderful. I'm having fun. <laughs> I want to continue this conversation with empowering women. And Desiree is is uh, 
I know she's got some amazing nuggets and and tips that she's going to share with our listeners. So we'll be back with you in just a moment. We are kicking your assets into shake on LA Talk Live. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Roth. Seasons know exactly when to change. Just as kindness knows no shame, nothing for your joy and pain. But I'll be loving you always. As a day I know I'm living but tomorrow. But make me the past for that I mustn't fear. For I'll know deep in my mind the love of me I left behind. I'll be loving you Back on LA Talk Live, kicking your assets into shape, and we are empowering women today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Roth, and I am here with my guest host, Desiree DeBro of An Empowered Woman. We are also joined by Marion Lopez of Parenting on Your Own, and we are welcoming a second, a third guest, I should say, today. Um, her name is Chauncey Bullocks, and Chauncey runs Bullocks Motorsports. Welcome, Chauncey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chelsea, introduce yourself and tell our listeners a little bit about you and, and what you do. Well, hello, everyone out there. Just uh, actually really happy to be here, by the way. Well, my name's Chauncey Bullock, and I'm the owner of Bullock's Custom Motorsports. It's located in Inglewood, California. But I would really say that I'm uh, worldwide, so to speak. All right. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I do everything from lifting, lowering, security systems, tires, wheels, stereos, Bumper to bumper, it doesn't matter what type of vehicle you have. So uh, you'd be looking at uh, wanting to have a dream come true and be able to roll in it or fly in it. I kind of do just about anything like that. So if it's bodywork, paint, custom paints, designing a different color, putting a fax machine in a helicopter, it doesn't matter. Wow, <laughs> that is great. And, you know, <laughs> it's it's interesting, you know, um, talking about uh, talking to women and, and women entrepreneurs. You know, it's very rare that you find women who are willing to enter a arena where it's male dominated. I know that also well because 
working as a financial advisor and in the financial services industry, you know, I was in a male dominated industry. And I'm going to tell you, when you're a woman trying to break into a male dominated in- industry, you have to just go in there and push your way. <laughs> so true. And understand, you know, that you have a right to be there and you just go in there and you do what you do. So tell us, Chauncey, how did you get into motorsports? Well, this is uh, going back, I would say, about maybe 15 plus years ago. Uh, one of my best friends was the vice president of a company called, and I guess I could say this, Rent-A-Will. <laughs> and it's where you would rent to own tires and wills. And for years, she was trying to vet me, to get me on board with them. And she says, hey, I can start you up paying this. I'm no, I'm not interested. No, I'm not interested. She's like, really, I need you. You need to really check this business out. And uh, when she handed me this this napkin with the starting salary on it, it caught my attention. (laughs) I had no idea the automobile industry was as lucrative as it is. So I looked at her and I said, okay, I'm ready to kind of really see what this is all about. So uh, I would say over the course of a year and a half to two years, I I made it, I would say, to the top with the company, but uh, it just wasn't for me, And okay. but the business was, mm-hmm. where I had an opportunity to meet a lot of people in the industry, and I decided to become a competitor wow. of that company. <laughs> so from there, it grew and blossomed into not just doing tires and wheels, but anyone calling me saying, hey, I'm stuck on the freeway. Can you help me? I just had an accident. Can you help me? Can you do this? Wow. And I'm not the no type of person. <laughs> I love it. You know, I believe in customers for life. So That's right. It blossomed into what it is. I at one point had multiple locations, but I think it's easier to just manage one. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I'm doing that right now. Oh, I love it. You know what? That just brings me to a thought. You know, we have a lot of women listeners out there who are maybe they're working in corporate America or they've had a career and they're on the brink of entrepreneurship, but they're a little nervous and, you know, about crossing over. And Desiree, you have an amazing story. This woman has been an entrepreneur just forever and mm. she has an amazing story. I'd like for you to share a little bit of your story with our listeners and, and be able to help out those women who who are, you know, when they're on the brink, you know, help, give them something to help them cross over. Surely, you know, it, it, entrepreneurship is a journey, you know, for male and for female, but especially oh, yes. for the women because it's a relatively new journey. And I've, there's always that pending question, are we born entrepreneurs or are we created to be entrepreneurs? Oh, yes. And I think I was born. I, from the <laughs> I age agree. of at 12, I started um, my own dance school. I used to use a playground. I used to go to dance lessons in the morning. And then I, I rented space in the playground and taught dance lessons in the afternoon to the younger ladies. Wow, that's the great. younger children. And, and this was pa- in elementary school. This is in elementary school. Wow. And this is where a lot of parents just basically looked at it as a uh, babysitting service, but I taught them. And then as I learned and we prepared for our, our recital, then I would prepare our ladies for our recital. And the people that I was leasing or getting the uh, facilities from didn't realize how young I was for whatever reason. And when they came <laughs> to our recital, it was packed. We were, had someone selling lemonade and cookies and someone running the music, and they did the recital. That literally, they shut me down because I was too young. <laughs> wow. And so, That's you know, awesome. But the lesson yeah. learned from that, and that's why I take every step of the way as a lesson, was that you don't have to know a lot to be able to teach. You oh, all, yes. We all mm-hmm. have gifts and talents that somebody doesn't know. That's as, right. As little, as minute as it is. Or we can go and learn it and then be able to teach somebody. Because I was making pretty decent money from that. I another, love it. Another experience when I was in high school, I think we all have those um, chocolate, world's chocolate. Best oh, yes. Chocolate <laughs> <bars>. yes. <laughs> yes. The almonds. And they were dollar a bar. And I didn't want to go door by door. So I would break the bars up. And they actually had 12 pieces in it and sell it for 10 <laughs> cents a piece. So to the people in the playground, to the kids in the playground, because they didn't have oh, a dollar. Great, right? but they had a 10 cents. But many of the 10 cents turned into a dollar after they bought 10 pieces. Right. But they didn't realize that. But I was be able to make a profit. So you can take something that you have, less than that, take something you have with the people right close and around you oh, and yes. be able to break it up in small doses and make a profit. So I, I made a profit and also won the prize for selling the most candy bars and that was good. Um, they, when I got older in college, I was living in the Maria Del Rey. And a lot of the, I noticed a lot of the gentlemen would go on the boats on the weekend and they would just leave and 
then come back and have to clean up the beer cans or the bottles and so forth. From their partying over the weekend. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and they just needed to get home and get to bed afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so I started a little Marina Mermaid service okay. where I said I offered to go down and just clean up. It was really easy. Thing. The cans, it's not much to vacuum, not much to clean. Right. I could do it within an hour at the most. But then I said, well, I couldn't do all that. I was getting more business. I put a little ad in the Marina Argonaut paper, getting more business. So I asked the ladies in school, my peers, yes. did they want to do it? And they were happy to be able to do it because they did it on their own schedule. Because as long as it was done before the next weekend, it was fine. And I was making $35, so I'd pay them 15 Okay. I'd keep 15 and put five towards the supplies. So mm -hmm. we had little blue T-shirts oh, with pink great. mermaids on it. <laughs> we had little blue buckets. <laughs> And they went and do it. It was great. We were I, making money. I was making money. And the guys love cute girls cleaning their boats, right? They did. They did. <laughs> Just the idea. And um, that went well until one of the ladies was smoking on the one of the uh, boats, uh -oh. and uh, ashes burned the cushion. It wasn't really big, but it was a warning sign. And the owner let us replace it, but he said you need to get insurance. Oh, yes. And when I looked at it at that time, it was prohibitive. I was like 17, 18 years old, and it was this cost. Not that cost effective. Right. But the lesson learned from that is, again, it's a simple business and you can expand it, you know, without having much to do. And um, people get people to work for you so you can duplicate yourself. You don't have oh, to yes. do everything. Absolutely. Well, and you just said so much in that. You know, one of the things that really stands out to me and that I always tell people is there's nobody that's more gifted at your gift than you are. And everybody has a gift in them. And if you can take that thing that you're really good at and figure out how to turn it into a business so that, you know, and you don't know what you're going to develop, you know, but you could be developing a, a totally different opportunity and experience for yourself or a totally different tomorrow. But, you know, don't take so don't take for granted your gift, you know, recognize, you know, I have this gift and I'm good at this and I can teach other people this. Exactly. You take that little thing. And that's really um, I think that's the starting point from transitioning from a job into your own business. Marion, talk a little bit about that because I know you've had, you know, you're, you've had some direct experience with that, building up this right. huge insurance business and now starting your own, you know, right. business. You know, it's, it's scary because um, even though in the insurance world, I, I was 1099, so okay. I'm still, you know, working still, there. Still independent. Still, yes. right, right. Mm -hmm. And so jumping from one to the other, I think the biggest and hardest step for me was when I had to um, make the decision to step down from the coordinator position. Okay. So in a coordinator position, you're overseeing individuals. You're helping them to grow. So you're recruiting and you're training and you're helping them to retain and stay in their business. Okay. But when I decided I wanted to do this, I had to make that step. And I had to say, okay, I'm going to step down to an associate because I'm going to transition down and out. And it makes it really difficult because mm -hmm. it's scary. It's like, all right, I know what this is, and I'm not so sure about what this is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Isn't that the truth? Oh, yeah. Yes. But you sit back and you go, okay, you know what? I can do this. Yes. And so I'm going to throw out a word. I, I know I mentioned it earlier. Yes. Si se puede. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not a great with my Spanish, okay, so <laughs> if I pronounce that incorrectly, I'm sorry, but I think that's perfect, si se puede, and I think that's what I tell myself all the time, and um, even driving over here today, I was thinking of that word, and I thought, you know what, no matter if there's traffic, si se puede, I am going to get there, yes, yes I can do it, and I think that's the attitude you have to have. That's right. So definitely. Oh my goodness, I I I imagine. I, oh my goodness, I, you just said so much in that even, you know, because a lot of women, you know, with being on the brink, you know, they have to think about, you know, what I'm familiar with this. This is security, and you know, a lot of women, you know, in our process, we want to feel secure, and so to make that transition from working from somebody to becoming an entrepreneur you've got to give up a degree of security. And that's a challenge for a lot of women. Chauncey, talk to us a little bit about that, because I know you had to deal with that firsthand. You know, what's what's funny to me is you said a degree. <laughs> it is a large degree that you do give up. Right. You know, when you make that conscious decision to move forward without having what we call a strong foundation, when mm -hmm. we're used to that, uh, oh, yes. that eight to five, Absolutely. Uh, that guaranteed money, regardless mm -hmm. of how you perform on your job. It oh, doesn't yes. matter if you're doing your job right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, guaranteed, I don't know if it's the 1st or 15th or Fridays or Saturdays for people, <laughs> but they know they have that money. Right. They know that, okay, I can pay my mortgage, pay my gas payment. Oh, I can get groceries. Absolutely. Uh, with us, it's it's up to us. Yeah. There, There's no support. There's no, okay, 
I, I have that other coming on, on the 30th or, or the four, <laughs> or on that fourth quarter payout from uh, a CD account. Right. You know, uh, I, from my experience, it's been what put into it. And, and I think it takes from the history of my parents. Mm-hmm. And I, I just really thank the Lord that, that I had great parents. Mm-hmm. My family, the name Bullock, mm-hmm. it, no matter where I go, when I tell people my last name, mm-hmm. they're always referring it to, oh, does, I think I know your uncle. I think I know your cousin. <laughs> it's because our, our family is known for being business owners. Oh, great. Uh, here in, in California, Southern California especially, mm-hmm. Uh, we've been in the auto industry, the furniture industry, and uh, even to this day, though, Bullock's, the department store, is not an affiliation, <laughs> but I do get phone calls of people asking me for chandeliers, for <laughs> diamonds and jewelry, things like that, but I have... Uh, so does to, that make the transition a little bit easier for you uh, with be, you know, with having a family that has a history of entrepreneurship, and that's something I can completely relate to. My husband's family is the same way, so if you hear the name Rolf and, and it's connected with a business, chances are they're related to my husband. (laughs) But has that made the transition easier for you? I'm going to give you an opportunity to answer that when we come back. We're going to take a little short break. Thank you for joining us here on LATalkLive.com. We are kicking your assets into shape. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Ross. This is Kim. And I'm James. Inviting you to join us on our all new reality radio show, Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Every Friday at 10 a.m. beginning June 29th. Join us on the show that gets your money straight and your business growing. So don't forget to tune into our show, Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes.com. And like us on Facebook at Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Or watch us on Ustream TV. This is LA Talk Live, reality radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure and more than just talk. We are your hosts, Kim. And James. Of the all new reality radio show, Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Which boot you gonna use, babe? The steel toe or the pointy one? <laughs> no boots on this show. <laughs> oh man, dang. <laughs> And we are back, kicking your assets into shape on LA Talk Live. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Rolfe, and I'm joined by my guest host, Desiree DeBraw of An Empowered Woman, along with Marion Lopez of Parenting on Your Own and 
Chauncey Bullocks of Bullocks Motorsports. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining me here in the studio. I just want to remind everyone that's listening, if you are a business owner and you're struggling to build your customer base, make sure you join me on August 9th, where I will be teaching you where to find those customers and how to build up your customer base. So don't forget to join me August 9th in Glendale from 9.30 to 1.30 p.m. We left out on a very interesting note. Chauncey was sharing with us what, the, you know, the, the process of transitioning from corporate America now into an entrepreneur. Chauncey, Chauncey, go ahead and share with our listeners what that process was like for you. Well, for me, I think uh, going back into time as to when I actually got into business, like I was saying before, my family has always been business owners. Mm -hmm. So it came fairly naturally for me, even as a child, uh, big, fixing bicycles in the driveway in the back. People ask me, hey, you know how to do that? Can you fix my chain? I'm like, no problem. In high school, trying to work things out. And, you know, at the time, the auto business wasn't always something I was interested in. Balancing books and being an accountant uh -huh. was my thing. I'm a numbers. <laughs> person. All right. So always trying to figure out how I'm going to make with this $1 bill, make it into a $20 bill. Oh, that was always that. my game it. to play. You know? <laughs> but um, overall, I, I would say in the late 80s, I really got into what I call business management and working in corporate America. I saw an ad in LA Times and mm -hmm. it says, looking for retail sales managers. Okay. It, it had a criteria. It even had an age criteria mm -hmm. to it. I wasn't 25. I think I was only 18 or 19. <laughs> and I still went in on a uh, into this interview process, there were maybe 400 people there. Wow. And I know I was really a kid. I mm -hmm. dressed up, you know, trying to look as adult as I could, <laughs> filled out the applications in this whole process. It was a full day process. Mm -hmm. But what I realized, they had you taking tests, a math test, English, etc. And every time they asked me to come back, they asked me, wait in the hallway, come back. I would see the the room dwindling down. Mm -hmm. It was at a large storage facility. So I'm like, well, what kind of job is this? They're asking for management. But it was what the company called uh, Thrifty Drug Store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think they were in business for a very long time. Now I think they are maybe CVS Pharmacy. Okay. And uh, to make a long story kind of short, I got on board with them. And when I got into management, and they hired me, but I was supposed to really be 25. And <laughs> okay. I was only. 18. But I realized when I was in a room with these men mm -hmm. and other management, there was no one there that I could identify with. Wow. I was the only woman, yes. the only black woman, mm -hmm. and they were older white guys. Mm -hmm. And these were really white male, you could tell, raising their families, right. doing their thing. And I that's when I realized I was tapping in a whole other field. Oh, yes. And uh, I, I learned a lot, mm -hmm. grew. I was only with them for a short period of time because I was always hungry to learn more and do more. So with having other businesses, delving into other corporate businesses within America, oh, yes. I uh, was really trying to find my niche. And in a short period of time, I think I was finding it. And it's just talking to people. Oh, yes. You know, you'll realize the way you grow your business is mm -hmm. just communication. Oh, there are a few so right. things that people have to do when you're talking to them. Mm -hmm. They want to believe you. They That's have right. to believe you. And they mm -hmm. have to trust you. Yes. And that is the key to success. Mm -hmm. Along with two other things, I say enthusiasm and confidence. Oh, my because goodness. Because those are the key things right. that make you successful. It really does. You're, you're so right. You know, there there's, uh, there's just so many things that um, I think um, entrepreneurs, you know, we need to know in terms of what things we should be focusing on, what our business is, what, you know, what, what does it take to really grow that business? And I love that you raised that point about confidence and just really being able to, I think, communicate that confidence. And that actually helps people to see that you have an expertise in what you do, because the confidence comes as a result of being sure about who you are and what you're doing. And, you know, I just, you know, think that um, there's so many um, of us out there or, or women listeners out there who they know that they're good at something, but they're still kind of like, mm, I'm not sure because in our transition, you know, to become entrepreneurs, you know, there's so many things that we're not prepared for. We're not pre prepared for this, the fear. We're not prepared to give up that security. You know, we're not de we're not um, prepared for walking into an industry that's maybe male dominated, white male uh, dominated. And those are the things that we learn along the way. Um, ladies, share with our listeners um, just some key things that maybe really work for you or, or some good nuggets that they can take away um, from our show today that can, you know, really help them out in their businesses. What things have worked for you? Um, what things, you know, do you want our listeners to know? I just want to uh, elaborate on what you just said. You said fear. 
confidence. Uh, fear, confidence. Um, and stability. Also, oh, yes. Okay. Um, another thing I would like to share, what I would like to share is mm -hmm. that it starts with you, it ends with you. Yes. And it's in your mindset. So security, you mm -hmm. know, is something that is a perception. But as we know, in the last couple of years, it's not necessarily that security. Right. We have to say that we're doing our business because we are going to secure ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have oh, to look yes. at it, the fact that's the most secure business that we're ever going to be a part of because we have control. Oh, yeah. The other situations you don't have control mm -hmm. over. So the mistakes we make, we have control over that. But the wins that we create, we have control over that. So if you eliminate and you take the mindset that my job, I always looked at my work, mm -hmm. my job, my business, be the most secure thing I can possibly do because it's under my control. Oh, yes. Just and that's right. I think there's nothing more empowering than to feel that security where your work is concerned, to feel that security in knowing that me. you're exceeding. Exactly. And, you know, that's what breathes in, you know, that security is just being confident and, and feeling like, you know what, I can do this. Exactly. Because you know the numbers. I mean, when you're working in a corporation, you don't know whether they're going downhill fast. Oh, yes. They tell you at the end of the <laughs> road. Right. So at least you know when you're exactly. going downhill, you can put the brakes on and you can say, okay, I got a plan B or a plan C. Oh, yes. And then another thing you mentioned was the fear. You have to enter it fearless. Oh, my you have goodness. to decide what is it that's the worst thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. You know, and many of us um, at, at, a certain age of life or whatever that we've had things happen already. Mm -hmm. So we know the worst thing that happened. But if you put that down in front of you, say, okay, the worst thing that could happen is that I have to do this or this and this. Then you become fearless because That's then right. again, you have that control. That's right. There are some things you don't have control over, mm -hmm. you know, and those will always be that way, though, no matter where you are and what you're doing. But you have to enter your business and maintain that fearless attitude every day. Absolutely. And you know what? And I, and I think, too, you know, I don't know that, at least for me, you know, anytime I engage in this, some, some new area of my business, I don't know that the fear goes away completely. But you know what I've learned to do? If I do it in spite of my fear, I will build the confidence along the way because I'm learning, you know. Yes. And as I, as, as I learn more, as I understand more about the process and what I'm doing, I develop that confidence. And that confidence begins to wipe out that fear fear. So the key is, you know, even if you're feeling fear, move forward in, in, in spite of. Take action. Action is the one thing that defeats fear. And knowledge, oh, okay, because knowledge is right. what we don't know. It's the unknown. So mm -hmm. if we know, so that's what I encourage a lot of ladies to do is to get the education. Oh, yes. Get consultants like yourself or coaches and people that know what they don't know because sometimes we don't even know what we don't know. You're so right But about if that. you know something, it's like you know you need to go right to get to San Francisco, mm -hmm. you have, you're less, more powerful about that. If you don't know whether to go right or left, then their, you know, in itself creates a lot of fear. So, um, a lot of the other things, one other thing I want to add is that organization, you know, I look, we talk about overwhelm, we talk about balancing, it's just I have on my office a uh, uh, calendar, the large calendars for every oh, yes. month of the year, mm -hmm. and I write on it the big activities, like our second Sundays, I put it in a certain color. I prioritize the things that are in green are oh. the things that are going to make me money. Okay. And I, the things I like that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so the things that I, the activities that I do that's on my calendar are in green. I love it. So I know that's where I need to be and where I need to go first. Mm -hmm. And then the second ones would be the things that are in yellow. Okay. Those are the things that I'm developing. You know, okay. Those are the things that you know you do, I'm developing to create some green. Mm -hmm. And the red things are the things more the servicing. You know, to create green, you have to service your clients, your customers, oh, yes. and your programs. That's right. So I prioritize, and I tell my team the same thing. You always wonder, like, what to do first? Mm -hmm. Well, what color is it? Right. You know, you know, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. And that makes it really clear. I do the green That's stuff right. first. The green stuff first. Get that first. out the way so I know I can feel comfortable and confident about doing, creating more products right. and service and be, all, be all happy about servicing. servicing. You know what? You are so right. You know, a lot of times when I'm talking to business owners, they're saying things to me like, I'm so frustrated in my business. I spend all this time trying to trying to you know run around you know putting out fires and address this issue and that issue and you know what I found Desiree and I love that you're using that that green a lot of times business owners spend too much time focused on the problems or the administration or trying to do this and that from for this or that per, you know for different people as opposed to focusing on the money making efforts you know I tell people all the day all time you want to start your day out focused on those things that have the highest priority mm -hmm. and at the end of the day if making money is not a priority in your business you will put it somewhere down on the list and guess what you won't make it. You won't They'll make be in it. That risk. Absolutely. You won't make and it. And money solves a lot of those problems. It those fires. Doesn't so it money all will put a lot of those fires out for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it really does. It, it helps in so many ways, right? <laughs> it does. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break, but we're going to come back to this conversation here on Kick Your Assets Into Shape on LA Talk Live. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Roth. Tosh Walker, and I want you to join me every Saturday evening from 5 to 8 p.m. for Cocktails with Tosh Walker, where each week is going to be a big party. Why? Come celebrate with me for the very first lifestyle entertainment sports show. And on my cocktail menu, I have special celebrity guests stopping through, and you never know who might come through, boo. It just might be one of your favorite sports celebrities. From Cocktails with Tosh Walker, the Entertainment Lifestyle Sports Show. Right here every Saturday night where we're more than just talk. We're Cocktails with Tosh Walker. On latalklive.com. Mm-hmm. Hi, this is John McClure Jr., a.k.a. Simply John, and I would like to invite you to join us on GospelRhythms.com every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our show, GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio. Join us as we celebrate Christians around the world in all genres of entertainment, as well as highlight interest stories on men and women who are making a difference and impacting their community. So don't forget to tune in to GospelRhythms.com on L.A. Talk Live. And we're more than just talk. Remember, it's a heaven's party here on earth. So live life. Love God. And welcome back. Here on LA Talk Live, we are kicking your assets into shape and we are empowering women with this amazing um, uh, panel of women, I should say, because you guys have really been dropping some really good information that I think is going to make a huge difference in the lives of especially our women listeners. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Rolfe. I'm joined by my guest host today, Desiree DeBraw of An Empowered Woman, as well as Marion Lopez of Parenting on Your Own and Chance. Seat Bullocks of Bullocks Motorsports. Before the break, we were talking about what things our women entrepreneurs and listeners need to know um, to really help them out in business. And Desiree, you just raised some incredible points. I mean, I, I just love it. I think, shoot, I felt like I need to have it, have a paper and pencil out taking some notes. So that was really good stuff. Thank you. Um, Mary, I know you had some tips, some specific tips that you wanted to share. Yes, I think, you know, I want to kind of go back to in regards to um, the women out there and men also you have children and you start thinking of all the things you've got to do I'm running this business I've got oh, yeah. kids to take care of I got the home to take care of I've got other relationships I got to take daily. care of and you know when you look at all that right it's scary and you think how am I going to do it so I always remember it, and, I, and I'm going to paraphrase it, but, you know, you don't need to look at the whole staircase. You just need to look at one step. <laughs> that's right. Look at one step and take it one step at a time. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's really important. And so figure out your day. Start your day early. And then look at what is it that you want 
done. Oh, yes. And, and then work on that. And don't start looking at everything else because it's when we start looking at the whole picture <laughs> that we, we get can't overwhelmed. figure it out. Right. <laughs> you look at this huge staircase and it's going all the way up and you're thinking, oh, my God, how am I going to climb all those steps? <laughs> you know, so you want to be able to just take one step at a time. Oh, yes. Too small. Oh, yes. That's you know? so good. Yeah. That, you know, that is so good. For me, what helps me to do that is I actually start the night before. I do a to-do list and I, I create a plan of what my day should look like tomorrow and one of the things that I've learned not to do ladies is I try not to over um, overwhelm my plan you know you right. I used to you know create this to-do list the night before and I have a million things on there that I knew I couldn't get done all in one day so what I started doing was looking at my day from a realistic standpoint and saying you know what I'm only working 14 hours today what can't get it done in those 14 hours is not going on the list today right. so I would just allocate time increments for each of the items that I need to get done based on how much time I was expecting it to take. So in doing that, that helped me not to overwhelm my schedule. Right. I think when you do that and you have that allocated time, as you were saying, it just, again, it helps you to just look at the small picture. Oh, yes. And I think it's really important also that we remember to stick to whatever our time frame is. So if oh, we're yes. giving 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, when you're done with that, leave it, whether it's finished or not, and move to the next one. Oh, yes. And if you don't get everything done on that day, don't sit there and be upset with yourself. Mm -hmm. Be proud that you got done what you did get done. Oh, be yes. grateful for that. And that just helps to make it great the next day. Oh, so wonderful. absolutely one day, one day at a time and one step at a time. That's and what's really important. I love it. And, and and what's the, do you have a tip for those that are trying to balance, you know, to do the, you know, how do we continue this balancing act? <laughs> yeah. You know, when you sit there and you have your kids and you, you have your work, you have to figure out what is it that I'm going to do and I think it really comes down to uh, a combination of things it's organization mm -hmm. you have to know what your calendar is yes. and and be on top of it so mm -hmm. that you know okay this is the time now that I'm gonna have with my kids keep it yeah don't break that time oh, and I think yes. sometimes we all get into this thing where if I'm not taking my kids to Disneyland then I'm not a good mom mm -hmm. well that's not true right because really you know, if I go back and ask my kids right now, what do they remember? They remember the silly things. Mm -hmm. They don't remember the trips to <laughs> Disneyland or, you know. Right. They remember being locked up in the car with me as we're driving all over, you know. <laughs> they remember just hanging out. And that's, that's what's important. So when you're transitioning and when you're busy worrying about your family, your children, yourself, take that time and breathe. Um, so it's not the quantity of time. It's the quality of time absolutely. that you're spending. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's what... I think more parents need to think about. Mm -hmm. It really is the quality. Oh, yes. um, you know, the quantity, it, that's nothing. Yeah, because, you know, as an entrepreneur, qual you know, time come at, comes at a premium, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard for us, you know, to have that time available right. because, you know, honestly, we spend most of our time in our business. So everything else, we're just trying to figure out how we stick in. <laughs> right. And, you know, as you transition also from one business to another, um, keep in mind, no work with people around you. I think Desiree mentioned, you know, solicit help, mm -hmm. get people to, you can't do it by yourself. Oh, yes. And I think um, now Merlino, you know, mm -hmm. from Count Me In, oh, yes. she says all the time, you know, you can't do it alone. Oh, yes. None of us can do anything mm -hmm. alone. And I think that's really important. So for me, as I transition, I'm working with my coordinator. And so I'm still out there working mm -hmm. and I'm I'm still looking for groups, any mm -hmm. employer, five or more, you know, <laughs> put in my little plug there. And um, I'm working it, I'm working with them, I'm overseeing it, but then I'm working with my coordinator okay. so that they can handle all the business, service it, and take care of it because mm -hmm. I am going to keep moving in the direction of my business of Parenting on Your Own. Oh, wonderful. And you know what? That team is like, it's so important. And sometimes, you know, it's it's a little hard at first when you're mm -hmm. trying to find, you know, the help that you need. And that's why I love today you can get a virtual assistant. assistant. Right. There are so many, you know, sites uh, you can go to. Um, where, you know, people will take on those little tasks mm -hmm. and it doesn't cost a whole lot to get the help. But, you know, one of the things that I learned and I learned this early on in my business, trying to do everything yourself, you get so overwhelmed. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. And even if you're you're really, you know, because see, in, initially you've got all this momentum, you know, so you're all excited. Mm -hmm. You've got all this energy yeah. and you feel like, you know, just a, a, a train, just, you know, just going through it and, and charging through everything. Right. But at some point... <laughs> 
That change is sure That train comes it? to a halt. <laughs> yes, absolutely. If I could throw in one more, I yes. think the thing to remember also, women out there, get connected. You oh, need yes. to be connected. You know, join different organizations mm-hmm. because like that's an what empowered helps woman. you. Like an empowered mm-hmm. yes. woman. Um, NLBWA. Um, there are so many different ones out there that you can become a part of. Keep yourself positive. Stay mm-hmm. around positive people. Oh, yes. Those that are not positive, you know, they're your family and your friends, stay with them for a while, mm-hmm. and, you know, but make sure you're getting <laughs> drinking from that positive pool. So being around great organizations is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, the first Sundays, those are an incredible meeting oh, yes. and you're around so many incredible women. And so those are so important. And you know what? I'm so glad you raised that point because, you know, when you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to figure things out for yourself and, you know, you are just, you know, really working it every day. You don't need to have people putting the wrong thoughts in your head. So you have to get around like minded individuals. You've got to get around other entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. so they feed into your brain. And I know for me. It stimulates stimulates me yeah, because absolutely. what happens is when I'm listening to other entrepreneurs talk about the things they're doing in their business and how they're just excelling and how they're pressing forward in spite of the obstacles, that encourages and it inspires me. And it makes me go home and say, okay, what, what do I need to be doing now? You know, what's my next? Right. You know, and for me, you know, a, a lot of times um, when I'm working on my business, You know, I'm doing everything maybe, you know, for the most part by myself. But you know what? When I connect with another woman, I don't feel by myself. I feel like, you know what? We're in this together. That's right. And it makes a huge difference as well. Sure does. Um, And then uh, one more thing that I want to mention, too, is those relationships. You know, those relations, who you keep company with is going to make a huge difference. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's always the hope that people have supportive spouses, supportive like mine. (laughs) But you know what? Even, you know, you've got to learn how to tune out the wrong people. You've got to, to learn to tu- tune out the wrong message. When you hear somebody telling you what you can't do, to me, that needs to be ammunition for I can definitely do it. If somebody is telling me I can't do it, that means I can definitely do it. It just means that they don't know how to do it. And just because they don't know how to do it doesn't mean it can't get done. So it's so yes, important you know to hear the right messages to to be around people who are who are positively reinforcing what you and what you do and again you know I, I'm just going back to an empowered woman you know I love when I go to the meetings you know going to second Sunday you guys have so many wonderful events but every time I meet another uh, woman entrepreneur we have a great conversation we're encouraging each other at the same time does not race throwing out nuggets you know every time I go I learn something new so you know you've got to stay around like-minded pe- positive people yes it's so that important understand mm-hmm. yeah. yes I yeah. think that's yeah. more we all important. have a lot of family and friends that wish us well but sometimes mm-hmm. they're not even on that journey so they can't give right. us any resources they can sympathize with us but we want resources exactly. we want yes. resolution right. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want Play the pity. I want the resolution. So someone exactly. that can give you a name and a number of hell here, use this person or that person, or here's this right. contact at the bank right. or the web mm-hmm. browser, whatever. Right. You Which need the resources, oh, and yeah. you're among people that understands. Right. Oh, yes. You right. have those days and what it feels oh. like. Yeah, and that makes all the difference <laughs> in the world if you can speak to someone and they're telling you how something happened and you can relate to it and go, exactly. oh, okay. I don't and feel your so friends. Bad. That's right. And your friends who have a career, they can't relate to entrepreneurship. No, <laughs> they cannot they relate. Get crazy. <laughs> That's yeah. You wonder why. Yeah. They want, why would Isn't you that do true? that? Yeah. Why would you do that to yourself? Yeah. Why? You're working 14 hours a day and you're yeah. broke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why would you want to continue? <laughs> yeah, but I, I think the pluses are, are the positive side to it is they don't realize how free you are. Yes. Uh-huh. It's a sense of oh freedom my that goodness. you cannot, you, you can't even describe it. That's right. It is. Absolutely. It is. And it, it just, you know, once you get out there and you become an entrepreneur and you're doing your own thing and you experience that freedom, you know, when you get a taste of that freedom, there's yeah. no going oh, back, yeah. you no, know. Sure <laughs> so you better connect with some good organizations. That's you right. better connect with some other entrepreneurs right. so that you can right. learn what it takes in order to keep moving forward right. so yeah <laughs> so get out there and find those organizations oh yeah said, make those con- connections is awesome again i mentioned nlbwa which is uh, the Nas- national the latina, latina business women's mm-hmm. association yes, and you don't have LA. to be latina to go is you what sure i found out you can just right. go that's right <laughs> those ladies have fun so you oh, know drop do. in on one of their meetings i'm too. gonna let you all know when the next one is also so oh, great. <laughs> great. and chauncey you had some things that you wanted to share oh uh, yes you know 
The key thing for me, I think, is organization. Oh, yeah. And personal time for self. Can, can I just interrupt for a minute and sure. say that, you know, Desiree said organization, Marion said organization, Chauncey said organization. That means it's, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, it's it key is. in a business. That's it. And what I recommend to everyone out there is really go to an office supply store and purchase a planner. Uh, that is priceless. I that love is my planner. To, oh, I, I love. Too. I still walk around with my planner, and people are like, "Why do you have a planner?" <laughs> I have a. I keep everything on my BlackBerry. I synchronize it with my Outlook and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know what? My planner allows me to 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 write down my to do list, my thoughts for the day, who I spoke to absolutely. for the day. I love that planner. I uh, absolutely. You know, and I think in today's time with Androids that we use our cell phones, yeah. they're great, but you know that battery does not last. <laughs> when you go to the phone, it's blinking, and you're like, I have to hang up. I have to get off. The phone's going to die. Right. And you're like, okay, now I don't have the address mm -hmm. of where I'm going. But uh, <laughs> to uh, get back on point, I I think it's it's truly realistic for us out there to know what we want in the future oh, for yeah. ourselves mm -hmm. in order to have that freedom that's good. Uh, there's a lot of us out there that we want our own business we yes. just don't know what it takes to get it mm -hmm. we think it takes having corporate credit and a million dollars in right. the bank and it really doesn't mm -hmm. it's just up to you it's yourself it's, it's a decision knowing, that you make absolutely and mm -hmm. it's knowing what you want to do mm -hmm. the key thing is to balance it out because a lot of times when you're stressed out you're going through a point on a daily basis yes. where you're not sure, okay, what was I supposed to do? Was I doing this? Do I have this to do? Or you're multitasking right. when you don't necessarily need to. But mm -hmm. when you are and you're stressed and the school is called saying, pick the kids up <laughs> and you're in the middle of something. <laughs> How many times have we had to do that? Right? Yeah. Hasn't it happened? <laughs> you want to try and find that happy medium for yourself. That, yes. that fine line that says even when things are getting a little crazy, mm -hmm. you have to find that inner peace within yourself, oh, I yes. think. Uh -huh. I, and I think with us as women, it's best to find some time during the day, whatever it is that brings you back to your centering space. Oh, I love that. If, it's, uh, you, if you're in the car and it's traffic, park. Mm -hmm. Take a few minutes. Walk <laughs> yes. around the block. Mm -hmm. I'm so serious. Finding that center really helps you become successful. And more I'm, so. I'm, a, I'm one of those women. I actually love being in the car. I turn I'm sorry, I turn the radio off and I just let my thoughts roam and I have such a good time. Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. if I'm not just, you know, enjoying my thoughts, then I use that time to check, check messages and return calls. I have some of the greatest conversations on the road. So, <laughs> <laughs> Which is also exciting, yeah, but isn't I, it? Oh, yeah, it is. And I love that centering thing about, you know, to, I got to do that. I've got to find that activity that I can say, OK, you know, serenity now. <laughs> <laughs> oh so yes, I think that's because a great tip. when you need it, some of us don't know how to find it and focus in on it. Oh yes. So by the end of our day, we find ourselves frazzled and graying and aging mm -hmm. prematurely. You know what? And I just want to throw this out there for a minute. Um, multi multitasking. You know. <laughs> Tell me what your thoughts are about multitasking. I, I know what mine, you know, I've had some interesting experiences with that, but I'd love for the panel to be able to just share um, your thoughts about multitasking. Um, for me, what, yeah, I find that it's highly overrated. <laughs> it's highly overrated. It's not always that effective. You know, exactly. It's not so many right. times you think you're getting double the amount of things done in a short amount of time, and if it's not done effectively. But My there's a way in corporate America we're taught to multitask, take on multiple things but it's not necessarily effective and mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll see it depends on what it is obviously like mm -hmm. I can multi my idea of multitasking is possibly listening to a video mm -hmm. or a audio while I am cooking yes. or do gardening or maybe you know organizing so mm -hmm. I can listen and do that at the same time but if it comes to like writing letters or writing proposals yes. or things I get qualified in my green mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. my money area I want to give it my underlying <laughs> attention yeah. we're yeah. all going to be that green <laughs> <laughs> That's my undivided attention because you make one mistake and it can be a bigger mistake. Oh yeah. So there's some things you can multitask with, but not. But not the green things. areas. Yeah, not, not the, the money areas. making areas. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I like that. Uh, I'm 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 totally in agreement with you with that because you know I just feel like you know in so many areas we've been forced to multitask, multitask. But you know what? When it comes down to something that's really important, you better not multitask. You better tune out everything to your left and your right and just focus. You know. And usually you get it done faster. You, you will. will get it yes. done because you're getting it done then it's off the list and can move on to the next mm -hmm. and you know what it, the funny thing 
is when you're so used to multitasking, you have to unprogram yourself. Yes. I know with me, a lot of times, if I'm working on something, a proposal or something, I've got to like listen to something because I'm so used to doing mo- multiple things at one time. But I'm pulling myself out of that so that I reckon, you know, I, I'm, I'm, able, I'm able to get focus and to put all my energies toward that thing that's most important. So. Right. I'm a recovering multitasker. (laughs) I think we all get into that mode and you just, it's really difficult, but you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Um, Both uh, Desiree and Kimberly both mentioned it, that we do have to really keep our eye when it's something that we know is going to generate income or it's a specific application that we need to have done. Mm -hmm. And if we don't concentrate on it and we're jumping back and forth, it does cause a lot of problems and you don't get the quality and the time that you need. Mm -hmm. So really, uh, I'm jumping on that green and yellow and red. And and you know why (laughs) we do it a lot of times too is because, you know, especially as women, we're so used to balancing everything, balancing the business, balancing the relationships, balancing, you know, our our own health and wellness, you know, balancing the kids, you know, and so we think we have to do, you know, run here and there. But you know Mm -hmm. what? If you're trying to run and do all these things, all it it does not work. It's not a good idea. There's a lot of areas where we do have to Mm -hmm. multitask, like you mentioned. Right, yeah. a family mm-hmm. or home, but it right. doesn't have to be everything, Ex- every moment. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. I think we get into that mode, and you're right. That mm-hmm. it's, we're told that. It's the same thing with uh, one-parent families. Mm-hmm. We think, okay, I'm the mom, so now I'm the mom and the dad. Well, guess what? You're not. Yeah. You're only like the that. mom. That's right. You know, right. so that's it's the same thing when we're in business. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got the family and we've got the business, and then we have the relationships that we're building to create more, mm-hmm. but they're each individual. And oh, I think yes. when we remember that, that'll help with the multitasking so we're not going in 50,000 different directions. I'm still guilty of it and I know my family and friends out there are probably going, yeah, right, Mary. <laughs> you know you run in circles. <laughs> so I am a recovering person, I love not it. multitasker. <laughs> Chauncey? Well, you know, I would say regarding multitasking, I have a lot of work ahead. <laughs> I really do. I, I think with me, it's because I am I, I like the feeling of the pressure and the adrenaline, mm-hmm. and I feel like I I know it takes a lot longer to get a lot of the things done, but now I believe I'm a better planner. Okay. So when I'm multitasking, I, I'm choosing my battles wisely uh, now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> Very good. You know, we are at the, at the top of the hour. We've, we've had such a good time. You know, this has been a very engaging conversation. And, um, you know, because we're coming to the end, I'd like for each of you, you ladies to just um, tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you. Tell them, you know, if you have anything specific coming up that you want to invite them out to. And, you know, if you want to leave, you know, a final word, a final t- nugget or tip, go ahead and share that. Well, first, I'd like to thank you for providing this forum for women in business. You thank know, you. So no matter where they are, they can tap in and listen to you and listen to your guests and your topics. And ladies, this is your vitamin. This is your energy. This is your juice. Right. These are the type of things that can keep you going on those days when you're wondering oh, yes. what and what if. Mm-hmm. So utilize and take advantage of these resources that Kimberly has brought to you. So thank you for that. Thank you. Because you, in that, in that way, are empowering millions of women worldwide. And Thank that's you. huge. And I want to join you. I want to invite you to join us, an empowered woman. Can we do radio shows, TV shows, matched by meetings, telecalls, uh, classes, seminars, and live events where women can share their stories, their challenges, their victories, and their secrets to success. So you can find us at anempoweredwoman.com or call us at 818-865-8563. That number again? 818 818- Eight six five eight five six three. And your August first event? Our August first. We're so excited. We're <laughs> launching our Orange County chapter. So I know, we've been I in the Los wait. Angeles area for six years. It's our seventh oh year. Goodness. We have about ten thousand women members oh, worldwide. Wow. That's incredible. And so we're launching Orange County in August and we're launching in Australia mm-hmm. in October. And we're wow. trying to do Canada before the year ends. So we really want to be able to reach every woman out there. That's a lot I oh my <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot. I don't know how you do it. That's a lot. <laughs> organize. Yeah, that's right. Prioritize. <laughs> Say that again. Yeah. Organize, get a team, and prioritize. I love it. That's right. Yeah. You don't have awesome. to do everything yourself. You can get a lot of things done through other people. Yes. <laughs> that's great. Thank you so much, Desiree, Thank for sharing. You. And um, parenting on your own. The best thing is go to the website, parentingonyourown.com. 
I am actually looking to grow my database as much as possible. So go to my website. There's, who are you looking for? What? I'm looking um, really any person who with. feels that they are a one parent family. Okay. You know, so whether you are a one parent family or maybe you're a military member whose uh, spouse is goes on deployment and it's not just limited to women right no this is for men and women. there's a lot of single uh, single dads out there they're, believe it or mm -hmm. not yeah you mm -hmm. know just to throw out a couple of numbers mm -hmm. just so that everybody knows there are, um this is according to the census bureau um 2009 okay. there are actually 13.6 million parents single or one parent families out there wow and they are responsible for raising a total of 21.8 million children oh my goodness and if you mm. break that wow. down mm -hmm. we're looking at one out of every fourth child comes from a one parent family wow so, so you're going to provide them with some insane. resources to get Absolutely, some help, right? Absolutely, some resources to get them going and so that they know how to go to the next step. And how can our listeners reach you again? The best way is go to the website. They can go to parentingonyourown.com. Okay. You can also find me on Facebook, okay. and you can go to Parenting on Your Own, okay, which great. is perfect also. Thank you so much, Thank Miriam. Thank you. Chauncey? The best way to find me would be at Bullock's Custom Motorsports, and my toll-free number is 877 Four seven zero seven four six seven, but I also do other things as well. Tell us a few that different number, businesses. Tell us that number again. It's eight seven seven four seven zero seven four six seven. Okay, and then tell us how else you can help our listeners. Oh yes, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm doing a woman's uh, know your vehicle one hundred and one class. Wow! Vehicle oh my goodness, when is that? That is scheduled for August, August fifteenth. You know what? That is. I'm so glad you're doing that because you ever see people's cars <laughs> stop? You know that scares the heck out of me because I'm thinking to myself, if my car ever stopped, there's no way I'm getting out of my car and pulling up the hood. I wouldn't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> So I think that is great. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So with this class, it you will better understand how your car operates. It's almost like understanding your body or knowing your body. I love it. And when is that class? It is scheduled for uh, August 15th. Oh, we've got to be in that class. And, and yeah. what city? It's in Inglewood. In Inglewood. Yes, oh, yes. 423 mm -hmm. East Florence Avenue. Okay. And it's suite number 14. That's in Inglewood, okay. and the zip code 90301. Now, is that on your website as well? It will be posted on the website. It may be on there, uh, as a matter of fact, and my web address is okay. www.bullocks, mm -hmm. motor, M-O-T-O-R, sports, S-P-O-R-T-S dot com. So that's bullocksmotorsports.com I love it oh you know what you got to keep us abreast of that because I, I, I know a lot of our lady our, our female listeners would love to <laughs> attend that can I just give a phone number oh, also oh absolutely <laughs> please do Marion so they can reach me at 323 this is Marion a parenting on your own yes 323-270-9414 one more time 323 323- Two seven zero nine four one four. Well, I just want to thank each of you ladies for being on this show today. And I thank my husband for the vision that he had for this show. I really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed each of you. And, you know, we've got to do this again. I mean, this was so, so much fun. And I love the tips that you ladies are sharing with our women entrepreneurs. And I don't know about, you know, everyone else, but I definitely feel empowered after this. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm encouraged. I'm ready to go out and say, you know, what do I need to do next? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to listen to the replay so I, I can know. take my notes. <laughs> Definitely, I'm so glad you say that. You said that because you can always listen to our replays at latalklive.com. Um, go to Kick Your Assets Into Shape, and the shows are archived there. And then we're also on Ustream. So if any of you ladies want to um, download the show for your listening pleasure, go to Ustream.com. And then a lot of our listeners tune in through iTunes. So we have so many ways for you to listen <laughs> in. <laughs> Kimberly, I'd like to thank both you and your husband also. That This has been fantastic. Thank you. Thank oh, yes. you so much for being here. And I just want to encourage our listeners to go to our Facebook page and like us at Kick Your Assets Into Shape. Um, also, give us a call. You know, if you have a question, you have a comment, you have a concern, I'd rather you put your comments on Facebook because it's so much easier for me to respond to them. But you can also call us at our office at 888-828-3332. Again, that number is 888 828 
3332. I'm your host, Kimberly Kelly Roth. And if you need to reach me, you can always <clears throat> go to my website at www.krfs.org. You will learn about what events I have coming up. I hope to see each of you at my August 9th event in Glendale, where I am helping business owners to build their customer base and to find out where are the customers, okay? And at the end of the day, we're going to increase your income through this business, this amazing business income accelerator seminar. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you to each of our hosts. Thank we you. will see you, you next week, Friday at 10 a.m. on LA Talk Live, where we are kicking your assets into shape. Have a wonderful Friday afternoon and a great weekend. I'll tell you something I'm not gonna